In this video, we're gonna talk about the practical steps that you can take to go from a middle school filmmaker all the way up to being a pro. Check it out. Hey, welcome to Hacking Hollywood. My name is Noah. Today we're talking about how you can be a filmmaker even when you're in middle school, the stuff that you could be working on right now, the practical things so that you can one day be an awesome filmmaker. I've been in Hollywood for seven years now working in television and film, and I would love to share some of the knowledge that I've learned. I've been wanting to do this series for a long time now because I never really had somebody to look up to that gave me practical advice on how to become a filmmaker. I learned a lot of stuff from BTS or behind the scenes type footage, but nobody sat down and made something specifically for me to learn and to grow and things that were practical that I could apply to filmmaking. And so that's what I wanted to do with this series. I hope it's useful for you. So let's get started. If I could go back in time and talk to me, the middle school filmmaker wannabe, this is what I would tell myself. Filmmaking isn't gonna happen instantly. It's a journey, it's something that you develop over time. It's a skill set like riding a bike, like driving a car, like playing football, like playing basketball. You're not going to be this instant success overnight. It's going to take lots and lots of practice. And as a middle school filmmaker, there are friends and family and people who don't understand the love and the passion that you have for filmmaking. And so the best way to show those people, the best way to show yourself is to practice and to realize that everything's not gonna happen instantly for you. It's gonna take a little bit of time, it's gonna take a lot of dedication, and I promise you if you stick it out, it'll be worth it in the long run. You've gotta make a thousand mistakes. You gotta make a million mistakes. The more mistakes you make, the more practice you get at it, the better you're gonna get. There's an old saying that experts are the ones who've made all of the mistakes. So. For you to get to an expert level, that's what you gotta do. You've gotta shoot as many things as you can, as often as you can, and make all of those mistakes, because one day you'll have made all those mistakes, and hopefully you'll be making less of those as you go on throughout your career. I've been working in the film business for about seven years. In fact, let me show you something cool. This is one of several binders that I have that is full of call sheets. Woo, as papers are falling out of them. These call sheets are the different productions that I have worked on over the years. Um, and it's my book to turn into possibly be an AD one day in the DGA. And I'm, I'm happy to tell you that I've been on set for more than 500 different production days doing various tasks from running camera to helping with background actors as a background PA or AD on the set, which helps kind of coordinate the whole production. So the first few steps is shoot everything. Do as much as you can take whatever kind of work you can get, whether it's recording a dance recital, whether it's shooting something for a church, whether it's shooting announcement videos for your school, just do, keep practicing, keep growing, keep doing your thing, and that's gonna develop skill. You have to have some sort of practice. I would encourage you to even consider produce a weekly video. Once a week, produce something. It doesn't matter if it's 60 seconds long, it doesn't matter if it's five minutes long. Keep it short and sweet. You don't want to take on an hour long project and it be too big. Think in, in incremental bites. And as you master that one minute clip, move on to a two minute and, and build up from there. Try recreating a scene from one of your favorite films. Remember, simpler is better. So the explosions and the fights and that kind of stuff, uh, you might want to hold off for now and hopefully revisit in a couple years when you've gotten your skills a little bit more honed in. Think about a simple dialogue, simple interaction between two people, maybe recruit some friends and do that dialogue, practice coaching and mimicking the camera, putting it in the exact same angles as what you see in your favorite films and your favorite TV show or even your favorite YouTube channel. Don't worry so much about which lighting you're using, which camera you're using, you could shoot everything in the start on your phone. Just get that experience, getting those reps in, so that when you do have a professional camera in your hands, you're ready to go and you've had that experience and you made a lot of those mistakes, so that transition to a pro camera is just that much easier. Experiment with lighting, borrow some lighting from your parents or somebody else that has garage lights or workshop lights or even a flashlight. You can use these tools to experiment and just see how light works and just practice with it. There's tons of YouTube videos. I'll put one out on the basics of lighting and how to use really simple stuff to get effective things in your videos. Like I said before, don't be afraid to start with a phone. It is a start, it is a jumping off point. If you can, save up some money and buy a phone holder, a tripod, a little mini pod, a monopod, a gorilla pod, something to help get that shake out of your shots. You know, if you have 
some sort of base for it, a mini tripod, anything like that will work to help minimize the shakiness that's happening in those videos. The next step, once you've been practicing, once you've gotten these things down, you can buy a five in one bounce. This is what it looks like on Amazon. It's only like 15, 20 bucks. You pick up one of these, it's gonna open the world of possibilities for lighting. How I love to use it the most is taking it down to just the under layer the diffusion and so you can shine light through that diffusion you can take a light source and bounce it off of it to fill in the dark side of somebody's face your subject's face so there's a lot of really really cool things that you can do with a bounce it's a simple tool but it's very effective get familiar with iMovie it's very basic and free program but it does a lot of powerful things you can save up later on to buy Premiere or Final Cut. But right now, let's just stick with the basics. Use iMovie. Don't be shy of that program because that's a very powerful tool that you can use in your arsenal. As somebody that wants to be a creative person, an artist, that's what filmmakers ultimately are, you've got to show your parents, your family, the people around you that you're willing to persevere and work hard through the times. Because a lot of the times, especially in the beginning, you're not going to make a ton of money as a filmmaker. It's gonna take time for you to develop a portfolio, to develop clients so that you can make money. And so your parents and your friends and the people that are close to you are worried about you in that sense. That's why a lot of the times, a lot of parents and different people aren't as encouraging as you would hope because they're thinking practically. Somebody who's been in the business for a while and I know that it can be done, it's worked for myself. That's how I make a living now is filmmaking. So it can be done, absolutely. You just gotta persevere and have the big picture in mind so that you can turn this into a career and not just a small hobby that you're doing in your spare time. That's a great way to start though. Do as much as you can in your spare time and hopefully you'll come to love filmmaking and it'll just keep growing and growing and growing. Be strategic with your finances, with your money. Hopefully if you have some sort of allowance or some way to save up a little bit of cash, save up a little bit of money, you could buy those simple things that I mentioned before like the Gorillapod or the 5-in-1 reflector. These aren't mandatory, but they will be very helpful for you to hone your craft and to develop as a filmmaker. That's the thing about filmmaking is there's lots of gear and lots of things that are involved, but you don't need everything when you start. You just start with the basics and build your way up. Grow your kit as you go. Don't depend on your parents to get you all of your gear. Don't expect them to buy you stuff. Expect to show hard work, save up some money, and invest in your own gear. And if your parents or somebody around you is able to provide gear for you, Awesome. Maybe you're able to borrow somebody's gear that you know and show them that you'll be trustworthy and that you'll be safe with the gear and not break stuff. Hopefully they'll let you keep using that kind of stuff. When I was in middle school, when I was in elementary school, I borrowed my father's video camera. It was like an $800 piece of equipment that not a lot of parents would let their 13 year old or their 12 year old play with that kind of gear. But somehow, some way he did. I really used it when he wasn't paying attention and when he was at home at work a lot of the time. But eventually he saw that I could take care of that piece of equipment and he trusted me with it and he let me use it. And hopefully you can do that too. Use your phones, take as many pictures as you can. If you wanna be a filmmaker, part of that is learning how to DP or be a director of photography. That is shaping the image and framing and picking subjects, placing them in such a way that you enjoy the image, that you look at the image and it's pleasing to the eye. And there's several techniques to frame people and there's a technical breakdown for those kind of things, which you can learn as well. So there's tons of things to study, what I like to call a lifelong learner. So I'm always gonna be developing I'm always going to be learning because I have a love for filmmaking and that's what I like to do is to learn. And finally, the last thing I would say is try to create something that you would love to watch or your friends or maybe people around your school would like to watch. Maybe a news program, a sports show, skits with your friends, something that you think that people around you could watch. Maybe you could turn that into a YouTube channel. Maybe you could turn that into something interesting and fun. I'm obviously not a huge social media star. I don't have a huge YouTube channel but I'm trying to grow it. And one of the ways you can do that is consistency. That's my weakest link right now is because I'm still in the film business. So I still get paid to work on set and to do those things. And so for me to do this channel, I'm doing it in my off time. I'm doing it when I'm not working. So it's a lot slower of a process because I have other commitments. I'm married, I have all these other things going on. So it's gonna take more time. So just know that if you're consistent on YouTube over time, it'll grow. All the things I just described are things that you could do as a middle schooler to hone in your skills to be a better filmmaker. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about how a high schooler, when you move up to that level, what are some of the things that you could do as a high school filmmaker to grow your skills again? Every step of the way you're growing, you're getting better, you're learning, right? Even, even today, um, seven years in the business, I feel like I'm, I'm always learning. I have friends, I have mentors in their 60s, in their 70s, 
that are lifelong learners. And that's the kind of person I would like to be. And that's the person I hope you, you'll strive to be too, is a lifelong learner. I hope these videos are helpful for you. Please let me know in the comments if you have any specific questions that I can answer about Hollywood. And we'll see you in the next one.